Good morning children. We see many animals around us. Some animals are big and huge while some are small. They move, breathe and do many things like we do. Children, have you ever observed them while they are eating their food? Do you think they all eat the same kind of food? Have you ever observed them how they eat their food? Do they all eat in the same manner like we do? We pick our food with our hand and then put it in our mouth. So children, today we are going to study about the animals around us. In this chapter, we will be talking about different types of animals based on their feeding habits. We will also be understanding the peculiar feeding habits such as gnawing and chewing the cud. We will also get the basic idea of a food chain. So children, let's start the chapter. Plants and animals are living things, but they are different from each other in many ways. Animals cannot make their own food. They are totally dependent on other plants and animals. Children, we all know that plants can prepare their own food by the process of photosynthesis in the presence of air, water and sunlight. But animals are totally dependent on plants directly or indirectly. Either they eat plant and plant products or they eat plant eating animals. Now based on their food, these animals are categorized into three categories. Herbivores, omnivores and carnivores. So let's study about all these types of animals in detail. Different animals have different eating habits. Animals like cows, buffaloes and elephants eat grass and sugar cane only. Animals that eat only plants, fruits and vegetables are called plant eating animals or herbivores. So children, animals that eat only plants, fruits and vegetables are called plant eating animals or herbivores. Some of the examples of herbivores are sheep, zebra, giraffe, cow, buffaloes, elephants and many more. Animals such as lions, tigers, fox, eat flesh of other animals. Animals that eat the flesh of other animals are called flesh-eating animals or carnivores. Now, there was one category where the animals were eating plant and plant products only. They were herbivores. Now, there is another category of animals where the animals eat the flesh of other animals like lion, tiger, fox, hyena and there are many other such animals. Such animals are called as carnivores. Let's move on. There are other animals like crow, bear, ostrich which eat plants as well as flesh of other animals. Human beings can also eat both plants as well as the flesh of other animals. Animals that eat plants as well as the flesh of other animals are called omnivores. Now there is a third category of animals. So those animals which eat plant products along with meat, they are called as omnivores. Like we human beings, we eat vegetables also, fruits also and other than that we eat fish, chicken, egg which are animal products. So such animals are called as omnivores. Let's move on to how animals eat. Different animals have different kinds of teeth. The shape of the teeth depends upon the food they eat. Herbivores have flat and broad front teeth to bite off leaves and grass. Their strong back teeth help them to chew the food well. So children, herbivores have flat and broad front teeth to bite off leaves and grass. But children, do you know that there are no teeth in their upper jaw? Instead, there is a thick pad of skin in the upper front part of their mouth, which helps them to grab the grass, twist it and pull it into their mouth with the help of their rough tongue. Let's move on to the next page. Animals like cows and buffaloes swallow their food after chewing it once. Later, they bring it back into their mouth and chew it for hours. This is called chewing the cud. 
children you must have seen cows and buffaloes sitting in shade and chewing something for hours these animals first swallow their food and then they bring this partially digested food over and over again into their mouth and chew it for hours before finally swallowing it this partially digested food which they keep on chewing for hours is known as the cud other herbivores like rabbit rats and squirrels have sharp front teeth with which they bite the food these animals gnaw the food now children you must have seen rats rabbits squirrels they keep on nibbling the food with the help of their sharp front teeth this biting or chewing of food with the teeth is called as gnaw carnivores such as tiger lion fox etc have very sharp pointed front teeth to tear the flesh their back teeth are broad and flat and their jaw is very strong animals like snakes do not have chewing teeth they just swallow the food whole so children carnivores because they have to tear the flesh that is why they have very sharp and pointed front teeth they have lots of canines in their mouth canines are very sharp teeth and their back teeth are broad and flat so that they can chew the food properly snakes do not have any chewing teeth so that is why they swallow the food as a whole insects have long thin tube attached to their mouth this tube acts as a straw to suck the food into their mouth so children whenever you drink juice using a straw you suck from the straw and then the juice comes to your mouth similarly such kind of straw kind of tube is attached to the mouth of the mosquitoes and butterflies so with the help of these tubes they suck the nectar of the flower or the blood of animals like mosquitoes they feed on the blood of animals and butterflies they suck the nectar of the flower so this long thin tube which acts as a straw helps them to suck their food the trunk of an elephant helps it to break off branches and leaves and push them into their mouth so the long trunk of the elephant acts as a hand it helps them to break off the branches pluck the leaves and put them into their mouth dogs and cats use their tongue to lap up water and milk so children lapping is the method of drinking liquid using tongue animals like cat and dog practice lapping to drink water and milk you must have seen dogs and cat how they drink their milk that is lapping let's move on to food chain animals and plants depend on each other to live plants can prepare their own food using air water and light a herbivore eats a green plant a carnivore eats a herbivore this is like a chain that plants and animals form in nature a chain that shows how plants are eaten by animals and then animals are eaten by other animals is called as food chain so children we all know that plants and animals depend on each other to live plant can prepare its own food using air water and sunlight whereas animals have to depend on plants directly or indirectly for their food directly in the sense herbivores they eat the plant and plant products directly whereas carnivores they feed on those animals which in turn feed on the plants so children there is a chain first there is plant plant is eaten by a herbivore and that herbivore is being eaten by a carnivore this chain where the energy from one organism is being transferred to the other organism is called as a food chain for example here in the book you can see two food chains are given first one grass grass is eaten by the deer which is a herbivore deer is eaten by the lion which is a carnivore this is one food chain second one is grass is eaten away by the grasshopper which is a herbivore grasshopper is being eaten away by the frog frog is eaten away by the snake which is a carnivore and then snake is eaten away by the eagle which is again a carnivore so you see children 
both the food chains are starting with the plants so a food chain always starts with a plant so children in this way the explanation of this chapter is done let's move on to the exercises question number 1 fill in the blanks using correct options question number 1 animals that eat only plants are called dash carnivores omnivores herbivores so children we all know that herbivores are the animals which eat only plants so here we will tick herbivore and we will write herbivore in the blank second ostrich and crow can eat both plants and animals and belong to the group of dash so ostrich and crow they eat both plants and animals so that is why they are called as omnivores third dash has a long sticky tongue to catch insects so a frog has a long sticky tongue to catch its prey or insects so here we will write frog let's move on question number b write two examples for each of the following now here we have to write two two examples first one animals that chew the cud we all know cows and buffaloes chew the cud so here we will write cow and buffalo second animals that gnaw so which animals gnaw squirrel and rabbit animals that use their tongue to lap water or milk so the answer would be dog and cat fourth animals that suck their food through a tube so the answer will be mosquito and butterfly question number c write one word for the following so first one half chewed and solid food that is cut second animals that eat only plants we all know the answer it is herbivores third animals that eat only flesh of other animals we know they are carnivores fourth to keep biting something to eat it slowly so that is no which is done by the rats and rabbits question number d give short answers to the following questions question number 1 where do animals get their food from answer all animals need food in order to live and grow they get their food from plants and other animals question number 2 what do you understand by carnivores give example so we all know those animals which depend on other animals for their food are called carnivores for example tiger lion fox etc question number 3 what do you understand by chewing the cud so grass eating animals like cows and buffaloes swallow their food after chewing it once later they bring it back into their mouth and chew it for hours this is called as chewing the cud question number 4 name two omnivores or name two omnivorous animals so the answer is crow and bear you can write other animals also like human being they are also omnivores ostrich it is also omnivore so you can write any example for question number 4 question number e answer the following questions question number 1 describe the kind of teeth carnivores have carnivores such as tiger lion fox etc have very sharp and pointed front teeth to tear the flesh their back teeth are broad and flat and their jaw is very strong question number 2 with the help of an example explain the term food chain a chain that shows how plants are eaten by herbivores and then those herbivores are eaten by carnivores thus transferring nutrients and energy from one organism to another is called as food chain all food chain starts with plant and ends with animals example grass grass is eaten by the grasshopper grasshopper is eaten by the frog frog is eaten by the snake and snake is eaten by the eagle question number 3 how do insects acquire their food answer insects have a long and thin tube attached to their mouth this tube acts as a straw to suck the food into their mouth question number 4 describe how herbivores small animals like squirrel eat their food answer herbivores like rabbits rats and squirrels have sharp front teeth with which they bite the food these animals gnaw the food now children 
in the spelling of na g is silent the spelling is g n a w but we spell it na next is hots question number 1 why do cows not have upper front teeth answer cows don't have upper front teeth instead they have a thick dental pad there they use this pad along with their bottom teeth to grab grass twist it and pull it into their mouth with their rough tongue later they use this thick pad to chew the cud which is the partially digested food question number 2 how are carnivores dependent on plants for their food answer carnivores indirectly depend on plants for their food they eat other animals which feed on plants next is life skill be compassionate towards animals as you know the number of sparrows is declining to help them grow in number put some grains and water in a bowl and help to feed these birds now children we have ample amount of food water and comfort in our home we don't need to go out and work hard to search for food and water but these little tiny birds have to work really really hard to get a grain of food or even a drop of water so children let's be little kind towards them and spread some food grains and put water in a bowl for these little tiny birds in our balcony or garden so children now in this way the explanation question and answer and book exercises everything is done children if you have any doubt or query regarding the understanding of any particular concept please write your query in the comment box i'll try to answer it as soon as possible All the best children